Hey everybody, it's Lebo with Lebo's Pinball. We are on part 11 of this getaway restoration. Uh, how many how many in the series are we gonna do? I don't know, I, 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 we're getting close to, to the finish line here. If you watched the last video, um, you may have noticed that when we were swapping out uh, the coil sleeves for these uh, sling coils, uh, it was this one in particular that the, the sleeve was a little tight coming out. It actually started out coming out fairly easy and then it got tight and, and, I, and I got it out and the replacement went in a lot easier. Um, but as a general rule, uh, when something's tight like that, that's, that's a sign that there might be an issue with the coil. Something may have swelled inside, it may have gotten hot. Uh, and if that had happened, there's a chance that even uh, there's a short inside. Um, it could be that um, where it was locked on for some reason that overheated it it could even cause a problem where it melts maybe some insulation inside of it, whatever. It's the, it could be that there's a problem with the coil. Um, I kind of dismissed it there at, in the last video. And when we got done with it and I posted it up on YouTube, I got thinking, it's like, you know, back my head, it's like, man, that just is a general rule. You need to check that out. And sure enough, someone commented on it and they read my mind. It's if, if a coil is, uh, got a signs like that, you got to check it out. And so I'm going to go take a wire off of each one of these coils and we're going to check the resistance off each one of them and just really kind of compare them. If, if they're both uh, really the same, I, it makes me feel like, hey, there's really not going to be an issue. But uh, typically for a coil like this, it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, I don't know, probably three and a half to five ohms or some somewhere in there is my guess. Um, if it's something a lot lower, um, then that's that's an indication that there's probably an internal short on it. Um, and especially if they're not the same, um, that's a, another sign that there's a, there's an issue. I, I, my guess is there's not going to be an issue because we tested it afterwards and, it, and the coils were firing fine. And um, if it were really bad... Uh, you could have issues where, you know, there, it's drawn way too much current. It functioned, but it pulled too much current. It might be popping even a transistor on the power driver board. That's that's a possibility. Or blowing a fuse. Uh, it seems like it blows transistors more than it ever blows fuses when you have issues like this. But anyways, um, let's go take a look at this and see... Uh, see what we find out and uh by the way i'm no means an expert at all this stuff it's just i'm kind of sharing my experiences with all this so i really enjoy the comments um it, it's helpful we're kind of learning stuff together hopefully it's this is um uh, helpful to a lot of folks where they can uh, dive in and do some do some stuff on their own games maybe some ideas of stuff that you like or stuff you don't like hey i saw lebo do this here and i didn't like that i don't want to do that in my game or you go hey that's pretty cool i think i'll give it a shot so anyways uh, hope you enjoy, and let's see what we can find out on this. All right, hang tight. All right, let's see. Let's get the soldering tip it nice and cleaned up here. I'm just going to take this one off instead of that one since it's just easier. It's just one little wire instead of the two. I believe this is, this would be the ground, basically a ground wire. You've got a, a continuous uh, wiring. Notice how it's coming in and out. It's providing uh, a positive voltage, I believe. Yeah, it's just it, constantly to all of them. And then the, the game basically uh, controls the coil by switching a ground um, to this other side. And that's what actually, uh, that's what fires the coil. And that's even a trick what you can do is, um, if you're wanting to test the coil, I don't even know why I'm talking about this now. If you were to take a, uh, turn the game on and actually take a jumper wire to a known ground, you should be able to, to uh, tap this in and it should fire the coil. A little trick just figured out I would mention. All right, so we got that one off. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off too. Well, I got the soldering iron nice and hot. Come on, well, hot, but there we go. All right, I thought I saw a tiny little bit of solder fling off. I do not like that. By the way, that's another thing to watch for, especially an EM machine. This is not obviously not an EM, but. You don't want solder flying in places to get into switches and bad stuff. All right, anyways, um, let's get the meter out. And we're going to see if I can, I don't know if y'all can read this. I may just set this here. This is just kind of hard, hard to do. And 
I'll just tell you what I read. Okay, so let's get this first one measured here. Okay, we are measuring. Gosh, you know, what I thought it would be was, you know, I said, hey, four or five ohms was way off on this particular, this coil. I'm reading about 15, well, it's kind of bouncing around, 15 and a half, 16 ohms. All right, and let's check this other one and see what we're getting there. Come on. Right in the same neighborhood. Yeah, look, it's seeing around 16, 16 and a half ohms. And now it's going down to, it's a, it's a digital <laughs> uh, meter like all of them. So it's bouncing around a little bit. Yeah, it went down to about like 15 and a half, 15 and 0.9, 16. Uh, I was hopping back over on this one. Yeah, I'm getting consistent readings between the two. So anyways, that's just a little bit of peace of mind. Um, and uh, just thought I'd, I'd kind of go over this and share it with you guys. And uh, I think we're going to solder the wires, put it, put it back on, and we will be good to go. Now, sometimes this old solder uh, needs a little bit of extra persuasion, a little extra solder added to it. Let's get this one this wire put back up here come on it's kind of nice and curved around so it should hopefully light it pretty well come on let's see by the way i have had times where um hey something quit working and I went and found a wire that had just popped off so some of these solder joints uh, aren't always the best and I mean like not necessarily from the factory I just mean it could have been just some crappy work done by somebody or myself or whatever you know just or it could have just been you know all those a lot of the hits you know I was mentioning earlier about flipping uh, coils over because you know the, the coil stop is right here and that's kind of like the epicenter of all the impact right so um, that can cause it too but get on there all right, let's see if we can flip my hands around here. All right, I think we're good. We're on there. All right. Okay, so we got the, the coil wire soldered back in place. Now we've turned the game on. I put it in that that same just test mode and let's just double check here the coils yeah, it's firing just fine and here's the other side yep by the way um one thing i noticed and figured i'd mention this just something i kind of observed didn't really pay attention to before um so look if i press and hold this switch down i just got one fire okay it didn't like machine gun on me right um same way with this one and what I mean by the machine gun, so I've been used to working on EMs a lot here lately. And, you know, the earlier design, if you would, if you were to hold that switch down or, or, um, or hold it to where it's really tight to, to the, um, the switch, you kind of get this bouncing effect where it will fire, uh, the, the coil, which will then throw everything out, which is just enough to kind of open up that switch and then it rebounds and then closes the switch and then fires and opens the switch and the cycle just just bam, 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 bam. Not really getting that here. I guess maybe if I got just a certain, certain amount of money, yeah, I kind of get it. But if I just just hold it, it's not like the coil is locked on, which is really good. And I think that would happen on EM. You would just get a just locked, held in place. Just thought I'd mention that, hey, we're good here to go. I'm just going to move on towards the, the next phase of this game, Restoration. Well, all right, so we spent a lot of time in this video talking about coils and went over a lot of stuff, you know, looking at and potentially, a, you know, a coil short internally, which would lower the resistance and would increase the current draw and could, you know, cause an issue. And it got me thinking, it's like, hey, you know what? I should probably spend a little time talking a little bit more about lights and LEDs and incandescents and all that. And there was a comment actually that said, hey, can we can we talk about that a little bit more? You know, maybe some of the, the wiring of the lights and all that. So I tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video uh, but go ahead and get ready to watch the next one because that's exactly what we're going to focus on. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next, next video.